Hi, this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and in this video I want to have a look at the panning options that are available to us in Cubase when looking at stereo tracks. I would imagine that most people watching this video are familiar with the traditional pan knob or slider that is a feature of almost any stereo device that enables you to set the balance between the left and the right channels. In Cubase we have just that, a slider, which is available to us both in the inspector for the track in the project view and also it's available to us on any of the tracks in the mixer. And this enables us to pan our track left to right to place a mono source across the stereo spectrum in exactly the position we want it. We're used these days to listening to the bass guitar being slap up the middle. But in the early days of stereo they didn't necessarily follow that rule and you could find the bass panned off to the left or to the right. But to these days we tend to put it in the middle. But whether it was in the early days of stereo or nowadays, the bass tends to be a monophonic source. Low frequency sound, panned in the middle, so it sounds good whether it's playing on your car stereo, on your hi-fi, on your headphones, or thumping out in the mono bass systems of a club. However, that's not necessarily true of stereo tracks. And we've got here um, part of a track called The Best Thing I Could Do, which is, as you might expect if you've been following these videos, a track that I'm developing for my forthcoming album. And at the end of this particular track, um, we have um, an ethnic beat that comes in, um, courtesy of the Korg Wave Station. And this is what it sounds like. So it's a wide stereo image and I can pan that just like a kind of mono signal. So that's fine, we can do that. But you might have a situation where you want to constrain the width of the stereo signal. Or alternatively, you might find that you've recorded it back to front. Let's say you're presented with a set of overheads for a drum track that sound great, but you prefer to pan the kit as if you were stood in front of it rather than sat behind it, and you need to turn the overheads round. How would you do that? Well, the answer is you don't use this system for panning, what Cubase refers to as the balance panner. What you actually go to is Cubase's combined panner, where you treat the left and right tracks sum together rather than sweeping across one to the other. And to access it in both the channel inspector and in the mix console, you just hover over the track in question and drop down and you'll see that you have a stereo combined panner. Select that and the display changes somewhat. You get this solid bar running all the way across. So we just go back into here and we have our solid bar. As you can see I selected it in the mix console and that's reflected in the channel inspector. And what we can do here is just grab one end of that bar and slide it across so that we narrow down the stereo width of our signal. And then you can get hold of that bar and move that bar from one side to the other. 
So, here's our constrained stereo image. And we'll move it around. So in that moving it around, I think you can hear that the width of the stereo image was controlled. So that enables you to make sure that you don't have things sounding completely wide across the stereo spectrum. Ah, but what about those drum overheads? By well, using the combined panner, you can reverse the stereo image of any track. Here's how you do it. You simply grab until you've got some space, grab the other end and spin it around. Cubase helpfully changes the colour from blue to this rather fetching salmon. And now our left is on the right and our right is on the left. So they are a hidden option for panning, but it might help you just create some space in the stereo mix, especially if you've got a, a large number of keyboards going. And for example, here we also have a pad sound going at the same time. So if I pan the beat so that it's predominantly on the right, and then we go into there and do the same, so that's predominantly on the left, and we solo them both. You should now hear, hopefully, some separation rather than the two sounds overlapping each other. Plenty of room for experimentation there. So I hope that helps and until next time you take care of yourselves.